Kenny Roby's new self-titled album has just been released, and we find Kenny at home in Woodstock. Kenny's been making records since the mid-90s, so why does he consider this one a fresh start? I went to see my baby away down by the creek Where she told me she would meet me down there I don't know if I was just making another record. I think it was, I guess, I guess in the in the sense of not to get too, I guess, philosophical or spiritual. I guess in the sense of uh, a lot of stuff did die in my life on on the reservoir of the record before this. So, in that sense, probably was somewhat of a rebirth. You know, I had friends that died, my marriage died. Um, I was in a new place. I was away from family. Um, I was meeting a lot of new people. So whether I want to call it that or whether I necessarily looked at it as right. that, it's the truth. I guess it, it really was a fresh start. Um, yeah. um, I don't know if if that was like some people have said, uh, you know, did you intentionally, you know, name it a self-titled record? And that's usually a rebirth when an artist has a lot of records out and they do that. Yep. And I guess I could go along with that, or I could just say that I'm getting older and I didn't want to forget the name of my record. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer. I don't know. Maybe I'm it's even, both. I'm know, even right? older and I, I, can, I feel your pain. <laughs> yeah. And then if I forget my name, I just look at the record and I don't get confused over which one is me, the title or the name. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so you recorded the record in Woodstock, right? Did, was it at home? Was it in a studio? No, yes. I did it at Applehead Applehead Recording Studios where I did the Reservoir, my last record. Um, and right. that was one of the reasons that I, I ended up moving here. Um, I just fell in love with the place and some of the people and and making records up here. And so we I made it with the same rhythm section that, that was on the Reservoir, um, which came right. out in the late summer of 2020 during the pandemic um no i i I did i i kind of don't make records too much at home anymore um there's a lot that i love about that uh i you know i didn't really make records at home and then in the middle period of my career i started messing with that a lot more and then i really was interested in it but it also slowed down the process of me making music and making recordings and the snapshot aspect of it of just having to yep. do all the technical stuff i know some of that stuff but but just enough to be dangerous um i could yeah. do home recordings but i do them as quick as i can a lot of times i just get out the phone and make a demo just because i don't even <laughs> want to get slowed down by the process even though i'm yeah. interested in it to some degree so when you I went like into being the, in the studio, studio what's that when you went into the studio did you have the songs written or picked out did you know what you're going to do or was there... i did have most of the songs picked out that i wanted to do and i had them written uh for the most part there were a few songs that needed a line or two written um right and uh what's happening here was just an idea for a chorus and the band and i it was the last song that we did and we just jammed around on it a little bit and came up with some ideas so it's kind of a musical co-write and I worked on some melodies as we were playing it for like an hour, just hashing it out, sort of like the Rolling Stones used to do, just sort of bang around in the rehearsal room, but in the very expensive right. rehearsal room, that is, um, yeah. in a studio. But uh, so that one was very fresh. Um, but for the most part, I had the songs written and most of them I had like an acoustic demo I had done quickly for the band to hear gotcha, before. Gotcha. Um, but, uh, but most of the arrangements were done on the fly. Um, you know, it's pretty, pretty simple music, traditional, I mean, not traditional, like old time music or bluegrass music or, or, but, but, but the forms are pretty basic, you know, we're not writing like Chicago horn parts or, you know, (laughs) avant-garde jazz or classical or anything like that. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty basic form. So we can, um, Cool. So the album opens with New Day, and it sounds like you got Amy Helm singing around on that one. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about the song? Why is it the first one on the album? How'd you get Amy roped in? Um, Amy sang with me on uh, Too Much to Ask for the Neil Casal tribute record. And uh, 
I had met her through Jeff Hill and Tony Leone, um, uh, who've played with Amy on and off. Tony used to be in a band with her in Olabel years ago. Um, and Jeff and Tony play with Amy sometimes or play with the Midnight Ramble band as well. So uh, Jeff had turned Amy on to the Reservoir record and she uh, got in touch with me and said she really dug it. And she let me hear a copy of her, um, her newest one. And uh, the opportunity came up to... Um, to do the Neil Casal tribute and she, um, and she agreed to do that. So when it came time to do my record, I thought this would be a good one for her to sort of bring that same gospel flair right. that she'd brought in, uh, that she brought to the Neil Casal tribute record. So she agreed to do it. Cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And while we're on special guests, you got John Sebastian playing some harp on, uh, a few tunes. I don't believe it's magic is a great one because of course there is. Do you believe in magic? <laughs> is yeah. that what you were thinking of when you wrote it? The hungriest ghost devours the heart and he can consume the light that never room never and it glows like magic in a show like magic but I don't believe it's magic in a no, actually, I wasn't at all. And <laughs> and Dan Littleton, you know, had said we were, I don't know if we were talking about John or something, how it came up. And he goes, man, you know, he plays some great harp on some of this stuff. And so really, it was New Day and then uh, was the main one. And I, and I also wanted to do, it's funny that I didn't even really think about that. I can't believe that I, you know, I'm like the right, pun right, master right. and the, like, the, you know king of the twisted idioms and stuff sometimes with friends and just making stupid comments and i can't believe it. i didn't think about that and we got him in there and 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 dan and i were like oh man should we tell him what a coup this is that we're getting him to to play on this song um i mean i guess it's i'm not saying i don't believe in magic you know i'm not totally contradicting him i just don't right. believe this is magic this these situations you know yeah i don't believe it's magic it's funny some people have gotten that a little bit off yeah. i don't really yeah. believe in magic though, but <laughs> and how did you how did you get it so what was it like getting having him in there and did you have to direct him or did you just let him play or what, what's the deal well i feel like compelled to tell you that it was pretty magical <laughs> um, it, <laughs> i mean you. i'm not kidding it, it really was sure. uh, it really for him especially on that song because it's yep. so much in his wheelhouse. You know, it's so much in that Fred Neal vein or that Tim yeah. Harden vein or all those old records that he sat in on and played harp on. And it's just the, when he plays the harmonica, um, I mean, he plays anything, but when he plays harmonica, it just sounds like those records. And so you yep. can't, Dan and I were like laughing like school kids. We were, we were, we were <laughs> giggling at how amazing it was when he was just laying stuff down. We were just like shaking our heads the whole time. Um, yeah. So it was, pre it was pretty incredible. And he's got, of course, great stories. Um, I'm sure. Great, great stories about hanging out with all the old blues guys and just the, the 50s and 60s scenes in, in the village. And just he's got so much history. It's not even funny. <laughs> And of course, he played at Woodstock I mean, solo, and that sitting there, just him and his harmonica, pretty much. Anyway, so there you go. Yeah, Which, yeah, um, I think he just played yeah. solo, yeah, acoustic and maybe harmonica. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the uh, the documentary about Woodstock '99 festival? I, I've heard about it, but I haven't seen it. You know, it's uh -huh. uh, I don't know. It's it it's I'm sure it's crazy. Um, it's pretty disturbing. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure it is. You know, it's probably like like that fire. What is that? That fire fire festival documentary, yeah, like that kind of worse. thing. Just a dumpster <laughs> fire kind of thing. Um, I noticed you got a little Zydeco thing happening on "Ain't Your Baby No More." You got to know, you got to know when to let your baby go. You got to know, you got to know when it ain't your baby no more. It, 
it's got that New Orleans thing and the Zydeco thing and, and that Texas tornadoes or that, that, that sort of text, the Tex-Mex thing. And I'm a big yep. Doug Psalm fan. And right. it also has that kind of the band feel like when they would do an upbeat song with harmonica and, um, and sort of take a, like, well, for example, like they did on, I don't, I guess there's, I guess there's, I'm trying to think if there's accordion on, on down South in New Orleans, their version of it. But, um, you know, that's like an old rumba that they learned from Johnny and Jack, you know, right. from the, <laughs> which is, I love Johnny and Jack, but it's total rumba, but they changed it around and they turned the beat upside down. And I just love that. So yeah. that's sort of like that song, you know, it's sort of a traditional form it could be like an old bluegrass or old time form that we just sort of put a beat to, and then we just sort of made it more danceable. Just met, that was yep, one yep. we didn't have a cool. full idea until we got in and played around with it, you know, put a, like a little Cajun meets Waylon Jennings beat to it. So. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Brian Mitchell plays Doug. accordion on that. He's fantastic. So uh, cool. You mentioned Doug Psalm. So what draw you to like Doug and the Sir Douglas Quintet? What, 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 what how did that oh, kind of, well, I got to be honest, Actually, Doug and I are in similar ranges and I, you know, I, I, <laughs> I like, I like singing along to Doug. Um, that's one <laughs> of the things, but um, just what a great, like interesting songwriter and singer and musician. And I've always been inspired by the fact that he just didn't give a damn and he would just play any song he wanted. He didn't care yep. if it fit, you know, the mold and he just played what he loved. And that's inspiring to me just to not worry about Oh, and this song I'm singing like this, and this song I'm singing right. like this. And he, that was Doug. I mean, he would sing a blues and and try to sound like his blues heroes, and you know, sound, try to sound like T Bone Walker, and then he would right. sing a song and try to sound like Hank Williams or or whoever his heroes were, or Old Soul or Little Willie John or whatever. And and uh -huh. and and I find that inspiring, you know, not to be sort of put in that box to where right, we just right, have right. to sort of be this kind of singer. Um, because I think we allow musicians to do that, but it's like, we almost don't allow singers to do that. There's like, Oh, they sound like this. And then they sound like this, right. you know, we want them to fit in our mold of what they should sound like. And I, I think a singer should be able to explore different voices and characters like an actor or like a guitar player can play different styles on a record. You know, nobody ever says, Oh gosh, he sings, he's playing the blues and then he plays country, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you could like sing like blues type, you know, voice and then you could sing country or then jazz or whatever and sometimes that can be a criticism from some people yeah 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 maybe i'm making so with that, that in up, mind but they, they kind of claim mind, you don't find your voice you know it's like he yeah. hasn't found his voice have we ever said that about doug's song <laughs> no of course not so with that in mind working on a new house the final song reminds me of harry nilson <laughs> your voice and your, your singing style on that one i'm working on a new house that's what it's all about I'm working on a new house Can't work on the old house Got wrecked in a hurricane When the geese were flying south So I'm working on a new house Things better than the old house yeah, I think the thing? double vocal probably has a little bit to do with it. But uh, yeah, okay. it's got that playful, that sort of, yeah, like the point. It's got, you know, it's got that that children's song vibe. It's actually also a little bit kind of Michael Hurley influence, um, oh, sort yeah. of the playfulness and the, the falling apart <laughs> aspect yep. of it. It was where we're sort of, you know, we sort of went there a little bit on that. But yeah, it's got that, I think it's got a little bit of that Nilsson and, uh, you know, and some of that Beatles thing and, or even some of the Doug Song stuff, you know, it's very yeah. playful. And what can you tell me about the song itself, working on a new house? I actually, I, I'd say every once in a while, I'll have a song in my head that, that I want to, I don't want to base it on the melody or anything. It's just a prompt. And that one was, I'm working on a building, the old bluegrass song, the Bill Monroe. And, uh, and I just thought of it, I'm working on a building, you know, it's like, I'm working on a new house. And I sort of have this sort of John Prine, silly kind of groove to in my head. And I'm like, well, I'm working on a new house instead. I'm working on a building. And it just started coming out, you know, it, it just sort of happened. I don't really know <laughs> what, you know, I borrowed little, little lines or a little, a few words from other songs, you know, a little nod to Hank Williams on, you know, setting the woods on fire and stuff like that. But, right, right. 
Um, yeah, I don't, it, I don't, I don't think I really had, it was just, it, to me, it's just, it's a children's song for adults to learn from. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So the record came out, what, August 5th. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just a couple of weeks ago. Have, have you been doing any shows? What's the, what's the live scene out there like these days? Um, it's, it, it's, it's a little slow. It's, um, <laughs> somebody was telling me, you know, 50 is the new hundred hundred is the new 200. Um, as far as crowd attendance, just due to right. <laughs> the, the pandemic and, and just in general, um, I mean, I'm getting a little bit older and, uh, my audience as well, and people don't go out as much. Um, yeah. but, uh, the reception has been great and I've been selling a lot of records at shows and people have been really into it and it's really nice to get back out there and play. It's been a while, you know, it's been, I'm on my yep. second pandemic record really. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> because seems to be a thing. Yeah. It's yeah. It's, I didn't get a tour at all in support of the last one. So it's, it's nice. I'm basically touring for two records, but I've done, right. I've been out on mostly for the last three weeks. I'm taking a little time off, but I'll get, going again in october so okay well thank you very much for talking to me i really appreciate it well thank you so much yep thank you and have a great day